Okay, I'm going to be doing a review of the two uh, different versions of the Astrophysics 130 uh, F6.3 GT and the 130 F6.3 GTX. Uh, the GT was the previous version. The GTX is the most current. Um, the GT is the middle telescope. That is the previous version of astrophysics design, and the uh, one in the foreground is the GTX, which is the most current version of the 130. I thought just for the heck of it, I would um, show my 175, the F8, and uh, just for kind of uh, to show the size difference. Um, the uh, 175 uh, is serial number 28. The middle telescope, the 130 GT, is serial number 33, and the scope in the foreground, the uh, 130 GTX, is serial number 699. Here you see the two cases that the uh, scopes came in. The 130 GT is the top case. The bottom case is the 130 GTX. This is the uh, 130 GT case, the previous uh, version of the 130. And you can see that uh, it has a spot for the telescope. And then it has those slots on the left that are used to put the covers so when you break the telescope down into three pieces it had a spot for the three uh, screw-on covers okay this is the case for the new designed 130 GTX and it is different uh, it has room for just the scope uh, the scope breaks apart in two pieces but they don't give you the covers those were options you had to buy the covers if you did break the telescope down into two pieces. Okay, I'm at, I'm at the Royal Tool and Machine in Northwood, Ohio, and uh, my good buddy Massimo is allowing me to use this Mitsutoya 600 digital height gauge. And what I want to do is compare <clears throat> the 130 GT with the 130 GTX because they come apart. Uh, they they come apart for travel, and I just want to kind of compare. The different items as uh, you take it apart what the different heights are on them so what you're looking at here in the foreground is the ring for the uh, GT the, the previous version and in the background you see the tube ring for the GTX okay the tube ring on top is the GT the tube ring on the bottom is the GTX, the newer version, 130. Okay, so this is the 130 GT, okay, which is the previous version that Astrophysics made. Uh, and it comes apart in three sections. You have the lens end, you have the body, and then you have the focuser. Okay, so here you see the three components that the 130 GT, which again is the previous model, what it breaks down to. On the left side is the lens assembly, okay, that, that uh, holds the three lenses. Uh, in the middle is the body of the uh, tube assembly. And then over here on your right, you see the focusing unit. And they all come, they're very uniquely designed. They all come with these screw-on caps. So whether it's internal or external threads, um, the caps go on all the ends to, to perfectly seal the unit from any kind of dirt or dust. 
So here you have the focusing unit. We're going to get the height of the uh, focusing unit in its in uh, in its own section, and we're going to come right off of the adapter, the inch and a quarter adapter. Next, we're going to get the height of the main body. Now, what's interesting is the caps actually have. Um, if you can see here. In, in the light, you can see how they come to a point. So they're not actually flat. They machine them with a little bit of a upward surface there. So we're just going to get this kind of close. This gives you an idea. Um, approximately, hopefully I'm on that. So we're going to get an idea of what this height is of the main body of the 130 GT. Now we're going to do the lens end of the 130 GT we're going to see what the length of that part is now, something I want to show is this is the uh, the tube the main body of the telescope and um, the end you're looking at here is the actual end that the uh, lens would attach to and when you look at the machining here how how they have that so everything fits so when you put it back together, it's all collimated. And you'll notice the ring, because this ring goes up through the body. I took it off. You'll see all the threads on there. You can see all those threads. So that adds to the accuracy, too, because it has a long lead. So that'll give it accuracy. But what I want to show is all these knife edges that are machined into this tube for light scatter. Just unbelievable all machined into the tube. It's one solid piece all the way down there. And those two screws you see on the left side, those are the screws that um, are for your um, finder adapter. Uh, uh, the little thing that screws on the side that uh, you can put a finder scope on. And uh, for this, since it doesn't come standard, I didn't put it on. I took it off because it doesn't come standard with the scope. You know, this is the focuser end of the uh, 130 GT, again, the previous version. I just want to show the quality that goes into even this. Um, this is the locking ring. When you bring the, the uh, tube assembly down over this, uh, it has a cut tapered in the tube that would go over this. This comes up and screws on to hold it. And again, take a look at these knife edges for light scatter inside here too. They don't skimp on anything. Okay, this is the uh, latest version of the 130, the GTX. And we're gonna check the uh, component heights of uh, this. Now, this model only breaks into two pieces instead of three like the GT. We have the lens assembly, then we have the main body. So a focuser will stay on. It does not come off. The only component that will come apart is just this end right here. Okay, another design change. There's something I want to point out. The difference between the previous GT version and this new GTX version is uh, for a rotating focuser so that if you've got a, a camera on here and you need to uh, orientate your object to fit the uh, chip that you're using, then uh, it has a captain's wheel. So you'd loosen this up like this, then you can go ahead and rotate the focuser to orientate the object to the uh, chip and then go ahead and lock her back down. So that, I really like that. that. That is just a little handier. The other one you just had to take that locking ring and, and rotate it. It still worked. This is just a little nicer, that's all. Another redesign of the latest 130 GTX version is this focuser. It has a three and a half inch inside diameter focuser and it allows for the optional prime focus field flattener. And uh, we'll take another look in here. Look at all those knife edges that are machined in there. Isn't that something? That is just unbelievable, all, all the detail here. So, what you have is this part here 
which goes in if you're not using the field flattener then you just tighten down these thumb screws Then you have this other adapter that screws in. One thing I want to point out too is they do this with all their stuff. If you're putting a two inch eyepiece in here, because this is an opening for a two inch eyepiece, instead of just a damn screw going in to contact your uh, eyepiece, he's got this brass ring in here so that when you tighten this down I watch the brass ring. The brass ring comes up and will make contact with the eyepiece so that you don't scratch it. And that holds good. And it's got three of these. So you can put a heavier load on this. Okay, and then comes with the adapter. Two inch to inch and a quarter. So if you're using the smaller inch and a quarter eyepieces, then you need this adapter. And even this comes with three locking knobs. So very nice. Nothing is spared. So next we're going to check out the uh, lengths of the two components of the 130 GTX, again the, the latest version. I also want to clarify, I believe I stated incorrectly, or I don't want to be misleading, that I said earlier that the 130 lens came apart. The lens and tube assembly are all one. The lens and tube assembly are one unit. The focuser is the second unit. So unlike the, the, the previous GT, which came apart in three versions, or three sections that you saw, this is only two. And I, again, I just want to clarify, I don't want to uh, uh, misquote or, or mislead you as to what sections are, are broken apart. So now we'll get the height of the focusing unit. So now we're going to check out the height of the uh, body assembly and lens of the 130 GTX. One thing I want to point out, if you notice, it rocks a little bit, again, because the cap end and the lens cap end and also this other end, if you notice, I've got a 4-inch uh, gauge block here. If you notice, it's not perfectly flat across. So I just point that out so that when we do our, when we check this, we're going to check to the center of that dome. Again, this just gives you an approximate idea uh, as to what the heights are. Because I know the uh, when I did a component on the uh, GT, it was the same way. So one final thing we're going to do now is we're going to check the heights of the complete uh, units together. As you see them here, the new 130 GTX is on your left and on the right is the uh, 130 GT. Okay, here's the overall height then of the 130 GT. And we're going to take the height right off of the uh, inch and a quarter adapter.
And lastly, we're going to get the overall height of the 130 GTX. And like the last time, we're going to get the height off of the inch and a quarter adapter. And again, I would like to thank uh, Royal Tool and Machine in Northwood, Massimo and Marco for allowing me the use of their equipment. It was much appreciated.